Hi everyone. So I thought uh, I'd just give you a list of recordings because a bunch of people have asked me for it. So I'm going to title this Recordings to Show Off Your System or Albums or Cuts that I'm going to be banning from the store soon. So um, now this is not a comprehensive list. We, we have a playlist that is really, really, really big, at least my playlist. And it started out originally as a playlist that we could do um, demos for clients. This way we can just easily pull up tracks and so on with Tidal or Kobas. But as usual with me, I have no discipline. I start thinking about music I want to hear and I start adding it to the same playlist. The next thing you know, I've literally got 36 or 37 hours on that playlist. So then I started another playlist and another playlist and so on and so forth. So by the way, if you ever want a copy of my playlist, uh, donate $10 or more to your favorite charity. Take a picture of that uh, donation. Send it to me, info at audioexcellence.ca and I'll send you the uh, title playlist. I'm creating a third one now, um, also called Demo Number 3, and it's already got a lot of stuff. A lot of it is certainly incredibly well recorded. Much of it is also just really good music that I want to listen to and explore. And some of it, yeah, uh, recording-wise, not great, but again, just music that I'm very intrigued by or just absolutely love. So if you're interested, do that. <clears throat> okay, these ones are primarily really good recordings. Musically, not bad. Um, I've purposely tried to stay away from the normal audiophile war horses that you hear from shows and so on, because you all know a lot of that. Uh, I'm thinking some of this uh, you may not know, but certainly stuff that uh, I like still. And uh, unfortunately, yes, once it gets played too much, I will start banning it. All right, first one, solo vocals primarily. Uh, Dead Can Dance, album is called Into the Labyrinth. The song is The Wind That Shakes the Barley. This is going back, my God, a couple, three decades ago when I first heard it. Um, I was blown away by the incredible um, clarity of her voice. Just stunningly well recorded. You can hear certainly the reverb mixed in, but it just sounds so pure and so good. Um, if you haven't heard it, check it out. Second one. Ryan Adams, uh, live at Carnegie Hall. This is not Brian Adams, the Canadian singer, but Ryan Adams. And the song is Oh My Sweet Carolina. Just sublime. Yes, he's sitting, he's standing, I should say, on stage with his guitar, uh, two different microphones, and he's just singing to the, uh, to the crowd. And it is so beautiful, achingly beautiful. He sings about his beloved uh, 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 hometown, and um, every time I hear it, I still absolutely fall in love again. The third one, uh, I've talked about this before, I think I have. Um, many years ago, I want to say maybe about uh, 15, 20 years ago, I was doing this installation in my client's house uh, all the way in a city called Oakville, which is west of Toronto. And on my way home, I'm driving up the street called Kerr Street and I'm just, you know, wandering, my eyes are wandering, and suddenly I see on my left, there's a little store that sells CDs. And as usual, I have to stop. I mean, as soon as I see a CD store, I have to stop, especially back then. So I stopped, went in, and started flipping through albums and CDs. And as I'm doing that, my eyes glance up, and I see this poster of this um, stunning um, uh, dark-skinned lady. I'm, I don't think she's black. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. And she's naked, but in in the profile, so you you know can't see anything. And of course, I'm 20 years younger, and hormones are raging. And I have to buy this album. I bought it, played it in my car, and wow, what a beautiful voice! I would play it over and over again whenever I'm in the car. And then somehow that CD got lost. Um, anyway, uh, about a year ago, I'm playing Tidal uh, radio, and this song comes up and I'm memories flood. I'm going, wow, what is that? I know this album. I ran out, took a look at the uh, cover art and realized it was this album that I played all those years ago. <clears throat> and it's called, uh, the singer is called Buika, B-U-I-K-A. And the song is called Volver, Volver, <clears throat> Return, Return. It's basically about her. She's singing about this, um, her lover who has left her and she's saying, come back. It's a very, very simple piece of music. She sings, there's a guitar accompanying her, and then when she stops singing, I think the third stanza, 
a trumpet comes in and it's so beautiful. Anyway, have a listen to it, see what you think. Okay, for realism, uh, and I define realism as if you're there. Um, Buddy Holly, True Love Ways, we, we've talked about this album a number of, uh, a number of times before the song starts. Um, and let me tell you the story behind it. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was, but certainly at least 10, 15 years ago, I'm at CES Las Vegas, Consumer Electronics Show, and it's a Sunday. Um, I'm one of the first people walking the hallways. I walked into this room and I can't remember which room it was. Um, I'm listening and it sounds really good. Somebody walks in, says to the exhibitor, obviously they know each other, would you like to hear uh, an album that I'm, I've just finished mastering? And of course the exhibitor says, please. So he pops in the CDR. For those of you who don't know, CDR is a blank CD that you can record on. Um, <clears throat> and start right at the beginning. The speakers completely disappear and you, you're transported to the recording studio. And you hear the musicians uh, um, tuning up, as I call it. You're just playing notes just to get ready and so on. And the producer says, quiet boys. And then he says, okay, Charlie. And the pianist hits the key. And suddenly everything disappears. It sounds, it originally sounded as if you were in the recording studio with all the noise and so on. And suddenly all the noise disappears and it's like phew, right in, you're focused on Buddy Holly and he's right there in the center singing to you. Um, just a, what a wonderful piece of music and the way it's recorded. So try that. Second one is uh, Ray Brown Trio live at the Loa. So Ray Brown, <clears throat> owned this club called the Loa and from time to time of course he'd play then and this particular cut is called the Real Blues. It's just a fascinating recording. About one minute into the into the cut um, uh, 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 the, the phone rings and of course everybody starts laughing but it adds to the realism of, of you being there. So try that see what you think. And then uh, last but not least Cantati Domino, we're going into Christmas. This is a, a, a wonderful old chestnut of a, a recording uh, done by Proprius, the label. Anyway, it's called Cantati Domino, and the song is O Helga Nat, which is O Holy Night. Um, it's, it's an organ with a choir singing. She's slightly off-center, and you can hear that very clearly. Um, listen to the entire thing. Play it at real life volume, uh, she sh you should be on stage with her, so it should not be soft. Play it at live volume, and if at the end you don't get shivers, you're dead. Check it out. <clears throat> okay, and this is the part that, of course, audiophiles all love, and it's the uh, dynamics and bass. Uh, again, I've, I've, I've tried not to list the obvious ones um, that everybody knows and so on. I, I tried to find a few that you may not know. Um, this is a cut that I believe um, uh, Peter McGrath introduced me to about a year or two years ago. It's called Vini Vici, Part of the Dream. Again, play it fairly loud. Be careful though, about a minute, two minutes into it, the bass gets really powerful and very loud. So when we were at the last Toronto Hi-Fi show, Audio Fest, um, in, what was it, October? Um, uh, we were sharing the room, well, we were helping a chorus, so Val from a chorus speakers was playing uh, in, a, in a room that's very big. Um, and to the left of us, as you're looking at the speakers, we were, uh, our neighbors were uh, using the Focal big utopias and from time to time they would crank. And then when it came to Val's turn, he would play this cut and he would really crank, just to show that our speakers could also crank too. Anyway, Check it out. Be careful. It gets very loud, very dynamic. You want to make sure that your amplifier and your speakers can handle it, otherwise you'll damage them. Um, this one is simpler, but no less, for me, musically impressive and sonically impressive. It's John Baptiste uh, Chopinesque. He's playing a, a grand piano. It sounds to me like a... a, a anyway, it's, it's absolutely remarkable. The microphone is obviously very clear to the uh, piano, and um, I get goosebumps when I hear it. He plays his variation of a Chopin piece, uh, Etude, and um, stunning, absolutely stunning. 
And the last but not least, so this was introduced to me by Peter McGrath. Uh, he came in June of this year to talk to our clients about the uh, uh, the uh, Wilson XVXs and the new Alexia Vs. And he played this cut. It's called He the Guard, and the uh, the cut is called Ratchets. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, Lewis's second favorite demo cut. Um, after what was it? The first one that Lewis likes. Um, uh, um, cashmere cashmere yes so the cashmere <laughs> has officially been banned although he still plays it this is a second favorite piece i still play it too. he still plays <laughs> it yeah, exactly um again very dynamic it's basically just a fun cut to play for fun when friends come over just to remind yourself how how great your system can be um, next category is uh, soundstage fun. And what I mean by that is your speakers will disappear and on certain cuts, you'll actually be extremely three-dimensional and, and, and uh, very enveloping. Um, uh, Roger Waters, Amused to Death, the cut is called Perfect Sense. So I want to say back in um, mid-90s, uh, there was a gentleman called Steve. Steve Portocarrero was the agent for Wilson Audio. Uh, he... Uh, when I knew Steve, he actually worked first for Krell and then he moved on to Wilson Audio. And Steve was this ginormous, extremely fit man. Um, he trained, he was a, a wild water rafter. He was, he was incredibly fit. He had slim little hips and these ginormous big tapers. Anyway, the um, reason I mentioned that is because whenever he would represent Wilson or, or Krell, uh, he would look the part because, you know, he was this very, very fit, muscular man. Anyway, he came to visit one year and he had the CDR. And in it were a whole bunch of really wonderful test tracks. And I was so impressed and I was so thankful that he came to visit us that I gave him a special, very, very special Mont Blanc pen. Um, it was only made for that one year and I went out specifically to buy for him and gave it to him and he was so touched he gave me that CD which is one of my treasured uh, um, possessions and on that cut was this Roger Waters Amused to Death and this was this album was recorded with a process called Q Sound if your system is set up properly and you're sitting right in the center you will hear sounds enveloping you coming from behind you uh, over in the ceiling it'll blow your mind if you haven't heard this set up your system play it you'll thank me <clears throat> second is almost anything by yellow if you like big sound stage you know sound sound effects that go from left to right coming forward from the speakers disappearing to the back and so on anything from yellow boris blank and so on will do that incredibly well um, and then the third if you're old enough you'll remember this andreas Vollenweider uh, albums called behind the gardens just a really interesting a piece of uh, uh, an album, well recorded. I really enjoy it. Um, and again, check it out, see what you think. Um, last category, I just call it simply spectacular music. Recordings are good to, you know, average to good, not necessarily audiophile recordings per se, but just really, really good music. Um, first one, Luciano Pavarotti, Nessun Dorma. Back in the 70s, early 80s, I can't remember exactly which. He sang this and uh, um, just captured anybody who's ever heard it. If you haven't heard it before, you must hear it. Um, towards the very end, he hits high B, which is insane. And he holds it for something like 18 or 20 seconds or some ridiculous length of time. Um, subsequently, many, many years later, um, the three tenors, so you had Pavarotti, Domingo, and Jose Carreras, uh, the three of them would tour together and they would sing this song. And because all were much older, they would, they would hit that note and then finish within a very short period of time because they just didn't have that same uh, stamina anymore. But Pavarotti, wow, stunning. Um, second one, this is a very good recording. John Rata with the Turtle Creek Choral on reference recordings, uh, P.A. Yesu. Um, very contemplative, beautiful, deep organ bass, and just the voices are so pure. Anyway, listen to it, see what you think. This is um, an album, uh, this is a comparison uh, of two albums. I, I, um, I was um, 
uh, I've talked about this before, but I'll just mention it again. Joni Mitchell, um, back in 1968, when she was 25 years old, she released this song called Both Sides Now. And the first time I heard it, I was a teenager. My siblings would play it. And I always thought, wow, what a nice, beautiful tune. And, you know, just harm harmony was wonderful. Not harmony, but the, the melody was wonderful. Never knew what it was all about. Um, and then about, uh, I want to say two, three years ago, a client of mine um, came by and he said, do you mind if you could play this song? And I found the song and he says, no, not this one, the one she re-released. And I had no idea that Joni Mitchell had re-released this song. Comes, uh, she, she, had re she had redone a whole bunch of songs and released it in 2000. Uh, Craig, you know who you are. Anyway, um, I listened to that song and it struck me instantly. So in 2000, Joni Mitchell was 57 years old. So basically, uh, 30, 32, 33 years later, she's had a much fuller life. She has been smoking all these years. She's been living everything that life has thrown at her. And this is poignant because the song, Both Sides Now, uh, uh, um, is about the the good and bad, if you will, of love. You know, uh, the good when you first fall in love, the infatuation, the your heart beats when you think of that person. You can't wait to see that person again. You can't wait to be with that person and hold them and so on and so forth. And then the love somehow breaks down. And that's the other side, both sides now. So when she sang it in 20, uh, at the age of 25, it was a very different interpretation than when she sang it again at 57. And listen to it. She takes the key down. She can't sing at that higher uh, note anymore. Her voice is raspy, um, uh, um, rougher. The instrumentation is a lot different, richer. But, oh, when she sings, it's full of unspoken emotion. Even if you don't know what the words mean, you understand very, very deeply that this must be something that's very sad, and it is. Um, <clears throat> another cut, Vince Gill, Go Rest High on That Mountain. Um, it's become a song that I, I listen to when I think about the passing of my brother, my younger brother, Ian, or my father or my mom and and this is the time that unfortunately I do think about that um, and and it's it's very sad it in particular if the passing of your loved one happens too soon you know uh, um, those of you who have lost loved ones too early you'll understand what I mean listen to this song it's absolutely beautiful um, Mike and I did a video about this particular song next. Mike, in my opinion, this, this was his finest video editing I've ever seen. It's about Leonard Bernstein, it's, it's Leonard Bernstein with uh, Vienna Philharmonic, um, Gustav Mahler's Symphony Number no. 5, Adagietto. I talked about this particular um, uh, piece of music. Um, uh, Leonard Bernstein performed this with the New York Philharmonic. Um, at the death of uh, Bobby Kennedy um, at his funeral. And it is such a beautiful piece. Mike will um, um, put the link below. If you haven't seen this, you should. It is truly an outstanding piece of music. Um, and then finally, N. Akiko Meyer's Meditation from Thais, the, uh, the, uh, the opera. I've heard this ever since I was a kid. My, my mom and dad would play it regularly and, and it's never gotten old for me. It's such a beautiful piece of music. Um, essentially it's about this, this priest who comes across this uh, prostitute and tries very, very hard to reform her and eventually uh, realizes that he has fallen in love with her and goes back to find her only to find out that she has died. And so as usual with, with operas, this, this piece of music is um, so beautifully um, composed to stir your heartstrings. 
Um, and this particular one is actually very well recorded. So anyway, that's my uh, short list. Um, please let me know if you like them, if you've listened to them, tell me. Uh, put them in the comments below. And of course, I'd love to hear some of your suggestions as well, uh, both in terms of the, the War Chess demonstration albums, as well as just music that you happen to particularly like. I'm always looking to add to my playlist. All right, well, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.